Headlights. They help us drive our cars and our bikes at night, lighting up the path ahead for safe navigation. Illuminating the darkness can help us avoid all kinds of hazards. In fact, miners have used head torches for decades for the same reason. But what about ships? Many have encountered disaster and danger at sea, most famously the RMS Titanic, which struck an iceberg on an unusually dark and still night in April 1912. Even then, at the subsequent inquiry, the question was asked, would a large torch have helped the situation? Why don't ships have headlights like cars? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs, and today we'll try and answer the kind of question that might only occur to you in the shower. Why don't ships have headlights? It was a freezing cold night when RMS Titanic's lookouts, high up on the mast and the crow's nest platform, spotted the iceberg ahead. In fact, they didn't even really see it, rather they described it as a lack of stars against the sky. It was so dark that the berg just blended right in to the sky and sea ahead. With just over 30 seconds to react, the crew tried to get the ship out of harm's way, but it was too late. Shortly after the ship had sunk in New York City, the first inquiry was chaired by a US senator. William Alden Smith, and he asked many of the crew and passengers what they thought had happened. Two of the ship's officers testified that if they'd had a spotlight that night of some kind, it would have helped them sight the berg sooner. And the thing is, it was an unusually dark night. Moonless, as they say, when the moon is hidden by the Earth's shadow and blacked out. Coupled with the rare calm, where the water was as flat as a garden pond, the crew stood very little chance of spotting the iceberg in the first place. Ice can be seen from far away when there's a moon. The light will reflect off its white surface, but if there's no moon, then the waves lapping at the berg's base can be spotted too. So, would a spotlight have helped? The chances are that the officers are right, and that yes, in those unusual, specific conditions, a spotlight might have helped them. But the truth is that powerful lights like that mounted on the front of the ship can be more dangerous than they are useful. Ship's crew rely on their eyesight for safe operating of their ships at sea, and they've done that for centuries. Lookouts were prized in the days of sail for their excellent vision. A skilled lookout could spot a ship on the horizon and then determine its type and home nation when, to you or I, it might have looked like a small white speck. At night, lookouts were employed to keep an eye out for tiny signs of friend, foe, or danger. The slight flicker of a lantern off in the distance, for example, or if the navigation was completely off, the telltale roar and white foam of breaking waves on the shore ahead. For this, lookouts needed excellent night vision, the ability to pierce through the darkness and discern what it was that they were looking at. By Titanic's day, and even today, things had not changed much. Sharp vision is still very much prized, but so is night vision. Being able to figure out what you're seeing ahead or to the side of you at night is absolutely paramount for a few reasons. First, for navigation. Beacons and buoys floating on the surface mark crucial channels and water lanes like highways, where ships of different types and sizes should sail. Seeing them through the dark will ensure safe passage, but if you miss their telltale location, the ship may be headed for disaster. The running lights of other ships at night are critical as well. Ships have lights positioned in specific locations to help identify which direction they're heading in. The port, or left side of a ship by the bridge, has a red light, and the starboard, or right hand side of the ship, has a green one. And then another light is positioned way up high in the ship's mast or antenna. From a distance then, other ships can see what direction you're heading in. For example, if you can see just red, then the ship is heading right to left. But if you can see all three of those lights at the same time, then the ship's heading directly at you. But if the ship had big spotlights fitted like the headlights of a car? Suddenly, the night's darkness ahead would be made murky by the powerful spotlights. You couldn't make anything out. The crew's night vision would be ruined, and nothing could be seen at all. Channel markers or other ship's lights might go unnoticed, leading to disaster. It's the same situation when it comes to obstacles or dangerous conditions ahead. A searchlight on the bow of a ship might only be useful for a few rare times in a ship's life. If it was on all the time, it would be a massive headache for the crew who are trying to see way ahead of their ship. Night vision is so prized that on liners of Titanic's day, anything forward of the bridge was blacked out. Lights either were shielded or turned off to preserve night vision ahead. 
Titanic was actually fitted with deck lamps all over the upper decks to provide 360 degrees of ambient light, but the ones closest to the bridge were fitted with a shroud so that the light couldn't shine forward and ruin the crew's night vision. Night vision was so prized, in fact, that the Titanic's helmsman, who was the man actually at the steering wheel or helm of the ship, was kept in a special room called the wheelhouse, which was then fitted with shutters so that the light of the room wouldn't spill into the main navigating bridge and ruin the crew's night vision. On modern passenger ships, the conditions are actually the same. One of the most quiet, dark places at sea on a big cruise ship is right at the front towards the bow where things are kept in the dark. But of course, on the bridge of a ship, you still need to see what you're doing, so red light can be used to light areas up without ruining night vision. So it's often used, especially on warships and submarines, to preserve crucial night vision for the crew. But spotlights and searchlights on ships have come in very handy indeed. In fact, contemporary ships to Titanic were built with a kind of headlight. It's likely that on the night of Titanic sinking, even a low-powered spotlight mounted near the bow might have helped illuminate the iceberg earlier. But in deciding to use it in the first place, the crew would have surely been extremely nervous at having their night vision ruined by the light. If Titanic was actually fitted with a searchlight, I doubt they'd have even used it at all, because that night's conditions would probably have been one of the absolute few and rare times it might have ever come in handy. Another time might have been in the fog. If a ship is surrounded by dense fog, lighting the way forward with a spotlight might, at the very least, warn other ships in the immediate vicinity of your presence. This, and the Titanic's recent loss, must have been front of mind to Albert Berlin and the designers of the German ocean liner Imperator in 1912. The ship was designed and built in Germany, and featured a very prominent carbon arc spotlight on the forward mast, a huge thing, almost level with the bridge. Carbon arc lamps are extremely powerful things, they're actually the types of light that are used in the spotlights that you see from the World Wars. Imperator probably received her spotlight to reassure passengers more than anything else. It's unknown if the thing was ever used, because, of course, sailors trusted and preferred their night vision. Imperator and her sister Fatland are two of the only liners I can think of that sported this kind of light. But recently I came across this beautiful painting by maritime artist Kenneth Shoesmith, who is an absolute legend of his craft. It shows the British liner Asturias transiting the Suez Canal in the 1920s, and shining out of the actual bow or front end of the ship is something you could almost certainly describe as a headlight. This is an example of a Suez light, lights fitted to ships specifically for transiting through the Suez Canal. Now it's such a narrow body of water that one wrong move could result in stuck ships. So seeing ahead in the days before radar technology was crucial for safe navigation here. And in fact, ships to this day are still fitted with searchlights specifically for this one purpose if they are expected to navigate their way through the Suez. Spotlights are extremely useful on ships, but not just for lighting the way ahead. You'll see them mounted on warships to this day, extraordinarily powerful things they can do two things. First, they can flash signals to friendly ships when using the radio might be inadvisable. And secondly, they can shine into the darkness and around the ship and light up any potential hostile threats in case they're sneaking in close to engage. In the Second World War, the naval battle of Guadalcanal was fought at night time and it was a complete shambles, with examples of friendly fire and the confusion. But crucially, searchlights were used to illuminate enemy targets in the dark and guide the heavy gunfire. The Japanese destroyer Akatsuki and the battleship Hiei used their massive carbon arc lights to illuminate the American cruiser Atlanta at almost point blank range, but it had an unintended effect. The light revealed the Japanese ship's positions, and Akatsuki found herself marked out as an easy target. She was engaged by six American ships who could see her in the dark, and she was smashed with gunfire and she blew up shortly after. So clearly, using spotlights at sea can have unintended consequences both in peace and wartime. So how do ships see in the dark today safely? Well, it turns out that we actually have a piece of technology that is more effective at piercing through the darkness than the human eyeball. Radar relies on electromagnetic waves, sending pulses which are reflected by objects ahead, sent back, and mapped out in clear vision, be it day or night. With this, a modern ship could spot anything well ahead, and in fact, modern day vessels carry different types of radar for different uses and distances. 
If Titanic was carrying a radar, her crew would have sighted the iceberg from miles away. In fact, modern radar can sight targets from 24 nautical miles or over 40 kilometers distance. It's estimated that Titanic's crew only spotted the iceberg from about 1500 feet or just shy of 500 meters. An interesting exception to the headlight situation at sea are icebreakers, amazing ships that we actually covered in an earlier video. But these beasts are fitted with powerful searchlights all over them, because unlike a normal ship, they are actually expected to be in contact with the ice and obstacles while they slowly steam ahead, so the crew really need to see what they're doing. So why don't ships have headlights? Well, some do, but it turns out for the vast majority, the human eyeball is just as good. We know that from history, lookouts prioritise their night vision over any kind of artificial light that might be able to help them see a little bit further ahead. In war, they were useful for signalling to friendly ships, but using them in battle could be extremely dangerous. And as for ships today, we don't really need to light the way ahead. Radar does it for us, seeing many miles into the distance for us and keeping our modern shipping safe. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Oceanliner Designs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we get new videos out weekly. If you want to support my work and get really cool perks like behind the scenes and early access, please visit my Patreon in the link in the description below or sign up as a YouTube member. Come and join the crew. And as always, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you again next time.